بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه We go straight away into our transaction and we are still talking about the riba and the last thing that we have covered was an introduction of the riba which we called it a riba is better than the word usury or even interest and uh, we are on to the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu wa arda. And before we go ahead with Ismail to talk about the hadith of Jabir, just let's make sure that we understand what is the riba. As we said, a riba is something that is being taken as an extra. That's the word riba. Raba yarbu. And the riba is absolutely haram and we're going to have the types of the riba inshallah because there's a riba nasi'a riba fadl and even the prophet he said the riba is 72 or 373 types and more and the riba which we are talking about that is haram is not the riba in everything so not everything that we take an extra for it in sharia is to be riba so for example if, for example, the person he had sold his car for two cars, there is no such thing as called riba. So if you, you sold your, uh, 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 for example, very pricey car, expensive car, and you've taken a two cheap cars or a deal you made for three cars, no problem. But you, you gave one pound and you expected that person to return it one pound 50 or one pound 10 after a time, then that is the riba which is haram. But let me just emphasize the fact, not everything which is called extra is to be riba. Not everything that we take as an extra, that is, we're riba. And we know that the fuqaha had differed regarding some issues where the riba takes place into, as we're going to discuss the hadith, which is coming through now the Categories where the riba takes place, which is the gold and the silver and the money and the uh, barley and the wheat, as we're going to see, inshallah. And we will understand as well why and the reason that they have the riba into them. So that was an introduction at the beginning, uh, which we had uh, two weeks ago. Now we go to more introduction and then we go to the types of the riba. Fadl ya Ismail, which is where it says Jabir, radiallahu an, he said that the Prophet sallam, cursed the one who consumes riba. Now, Jabir narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cursed the receiver of interest, the one who gives it, the one who records it, and its two witnesses. He said, okay. <clears throat> he said they are all the same. Right. So we find here the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cursed the one who consumes the riba and the one who gives it to somebody else to consume it, and the one who writes it, and the one who has witnesses, all of them are the same. So if you are a person working in a bank where the riba takes place, even if you're working in the counter, or if you're working in the back in the office, or you are making a program uh, or, a, or an application to make the riba better and more, <coughs> and more marketed, then you are involved into this curse, and all of you are to be the same. طيب. Let's go, inshallah, to the following hadith, hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Now, Ibn Mas'ud narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> Riba has 73 varieties, the slightest of which in sin is like a man having intercourse with his mother. What more do you want as a punishment or a deterrence for the person to take riba. That the riba, imagine it's 73 levels. Okay, and the easiest of all, the one which is the sin sin wise, the least of them, is equivalent to a person who is making incest, that is fornicating with his maharim and here his mother. How disgusting to do that. Well, this is the minimum level of sin wise, of sinning regarding indulging in riba. So for those who are taking houses with mortgages and all of that, they should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> now, Abdullah ibn Hanzalah narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
One gold coin of riba that a person knowingly consumes is worse than 36 acts of fornication. Subhanallah. So one dirham, dirham is silver, means that this is the, the minimum in terms of money-wise. Dirham, okay, it's equivalent to less than a pound. Okay, if you take it into riba, while you know it is riba, then it is worse in sin wise than fornicating 36 times so imagine you how much how much sin you're going to get which is a major sin to fornicate one time to, to fornicate 36 times uh, you know some people they don't understand how you know they will be disgusted when they told somebody had made the zina oh audu billah is bad somebody taking a house into a mortgage uh, yani, it's okay it's acceptable so if they had it is in their mind that this person who's taking mortgage is worse than fornicating 36 times. I don't think anybody would indulge into riba. I don't think anybody would buy a house into a mortgage way. No way. Because you see the people as messed up regarding their categorization of the sins, subhanAllah. And riba is one of those sins and major sins which are being underestimated all the time. The Mas'ud. <clears throat> Ibn Mas'ud also reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no one is greatly engrossed in riba except that his affair will end up in little wealth. Okay, right. So any person who takes a lot of riba and the riba he thinks is going to take a lot of money, definitely his consequences, that, that the matter will go and directly into, it's going to go less, less into either money, literally money, there's no less, or less in barakah. And that's true. Those people are indulging to uh, too much riba. They know what I'm talking about. That, subhanallah. Either they're going to be in less, literally that means that the money goes less, and suddenly they become bankrupt, okay, after they've been rich, or suddenly that they don't have barakah. The money is not really uh, having any barakah into it. Okay, let's talk about the categories of riba. Now, it's categories. Riba is divided into two categories, riba and nas riba and nasi'ah and riba nasi'ah nasi'ah and riba al-fadl. Riba and nasi'ah is a stipulated increase in payments received by the creditor from the debtor due to delaying the payment. Okay. This, this... No. Okay, go ahead. Fadl. This type of riba is forbidden by the Quran, Sunnah and the consensus of the nation. Riba and nasi'ah is that usually is the case I lend you some money and then after a while you return them extra the money and extra and the riba nasiya is clear cut riba so we call it in Arabic riba jali it's obvious to everybody I mean if somebody tells me for example okay brother tell lend me 500 I say okay how many years you want it what are two months three months okay three months return them 510 pounds yeah I, mean, I don't think he will say to you come on fear Allah would say to me sheikh it's haram so this we call it riba jali, clear cut riba. But the riba which is khafi is the, is the one which is worse. That's the one which is the second one. Naam. Riba al fadl is where money is exchanged for money or food for food in a spot transaction but with unequal values. This is forbidden by the sunnah, the consensus, uh, uh, and the consensus as it is a means that may that may lead to riba and nasi'ah. 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 Nasi Hamza, Hamza. It sounds funny. Type. Um, so this riba is going to lead to the first riba. And that's why it's hidden. And it's worse because people indulge into it without knowing it is riba. Here we find that a person selling food with food, that is like to say, dates with dates. So he bought quality A dates, let's say sukkari, and he got one kilo. And he wants to swap it, okay, for five kilos of dates which are class B or class C, which is not really good dates. Now, in, in the market, you know, if you sell the class A, which is the sukkari, for example, and take the money, you'll be able to purchase five kilos from that particular class B or class C dates. But to do it this way, it's called riba, that is al-fadl. Riba al-fadl, which is that fadl. Fadl means extra quantity, and that's riba. So if you want to make it halal, sell your class A dates and get the money and with that money buy class B, class C and doesn't matter how many kilos you want from that but if it's if you want to make it halal 
then it has to be in this way. That is, you make you put class A, for example, sukkari, one kilo, you have to swap it and exchange it for one kilo for class C or D or E, whatever. Then it will be halal. One kilo for one kilo. And there's another condition for that in these things that it has to be on the spot. So it has to be on time. I cannot really wait. So I can't say to him, for example, take one kilo of the sukkari date and give me uh, a day or so or half an hour. Let me go and bring from my home class C or D. No, it has to be on the spot, hand to hand. As we're going to see with practice, inshallah, examples, we're going to learn in a minute. So this understand this very well, inshallah, where the riba. So riba here is called riba al-fadl. We're going to understand it very well, where the person, he is not supposed to give extra because it's the same item. It's the same item. It's to be with the same amount. So one kilo of wheat, class A. If you want to swap it with class B and class C, even the class C is cheaper, okay, then it has to be, that is, one kilo. Uh, uh, five grams of 24 carats of gold. If you want to swap it with 18 carats of gold, if it's going to be halal, it has to be five grams of 18 carats of gold. You cannot just say, well, I know that my five grams of 24 carats much, much more expensive than the one which is in the 18 carat gold. So how can it be fair to, you know, to buy five with five? You want to be had, but you want to buy more, sell that five grams of gold, which is the 24 carats, into money, bring the currency, the money, the pounds, and then buy whatever you like from that, you know, 18 carats of gold. But if you're going to swap it like this, it has to be five carats or five carats. Now, but if the items differ, and this is a different case, like for example, I'm buying gold with silver, no problem. I could really differ. So, could, for example, five grams of 24 carats of gold, I could buy two kilos of silver. It doesn't matter. As long as it is at the same time. Always at the same time. Uh, for example, uh, five kilos of uh, sukkari date, the class A dates, I want to exchange it for 20 kilos of wheat. No problem, because it's different items here. As long as it is at the same time. Tit for tat. And you take and give. Take and give. So you give and take. That's it, straight away. Same thing with the money. You know, the money exchange as well. That's the money exchange, which is we said that don't work into the work uh, stock market where there's money exchange. Don't let the other people do it, not you. Because there are lots of things happening. Now, if I, for example, change one pound into dollars, no problem because they're differing. So if I'm one pound, total dollars, two pounds is equivalent to four dollars, no problem because they're different currency here but it has to be at the same time. It has to be exactly the same time. But, but the, uh, uh, basically, the, uh, if I'm going to be one pound, let's say I'm going to be saying, let's say five pounds uh, of uh, paper, I'm going to get coins. So it has to be five pounds with five pounds. Coins to five pounds equivalent. I cannot say, well, because I'm in need of change. But I will give you four pound fifty and for that. This was being done a long time ago when we had the phone boxes using the, 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 the pound coins. So everybody wants pound coins to put in that box. I, I was at that time, I remember. And uh, I used to remember in Saudi Arabia, the, you know, the boxes from phone boxes, we had to go there and line up as well. And they used to take the reals, the reals which is, are in coins. Okay, now most of the people have got notes. To get these coins, you need to go all the way to the post office and line up and get these coins when we used to make Umrah to phone our families there from Saudi Arabia. So we used to have, for example, 10 rials and subhanAllah, we find people, they will sell you this 10 rials for 9 rials of coins. That's haram. Because it's, it's coins against paper. And since it's the same currency, rial for rial. So it has to be exactly the same. Yes, Sheikh Ibn Uthaybin, uh, he made a fatwa which the scholars did not really agree with that it is no problem as long as it is not being done because of this, it's because of the service. Meaning that this person, he's going to go travel all the way to the post office. Yeah, okay, well, that, that is the case, if it is the case. But the thing is that these people, they can take it as a tijara. It's not, for example, I have seen a person go and get it for me. Okay, I'll give you two, two riyals. Go and give me coins from there. It doesn't matter. But this is now swapping this for that, and that is haram. So if it's currency, it has to be, if it's going to be the same currency, five pounds. And this happens as well when you have uh, somebody about uh, two days ago gave me 
some money and there's included 20 pound notes, the old one. I said, brother, I don't want this. He said, Akhi, you know, keep them. Maybe they will go more expensive. I said, that's the river. 20 pounds, regardless of how old it is. There are some people, I remember that they even keep in pound notes from, you know, before. Well, if you're doing that, haram, yakhi, to sell it. You think it is like an antique. No, akhi. That one pound of yours, if you kept it, is going to be equivalent to one pound of our money. Regardless of how long you kept it, there's no such thing called antique in money. The money, and it has to be equivalent to that thing. One pound to one pound. So if you kept your five pounds, which is a lot old one, you think you're going to gain more money for it, sell it, for, use it from now. Go to the bank and exchange it for the new one. You can't do haram. This is not allowed. How many people do they, do they know these things, subhanAllah? Uh, we tell them these things because it's very new for them because they, they keep money and they, they hold it and they say that this is really old and it's going to be more worthy. No, أخي. money for money, equivalent, pound for a pound. But if it's pound for a dollar, pound for Jordanian dinars, yeah, it could differ the quantity, but it has to be all of the all the way, same time. Same thing here when buying gold. When you buy gold with your money, for example, pay 1,000 pounds, I'm going to gain gold. It has to be at the same time. So buying gold online is haram. So if I'm going to buy, I'm paying with my credit card or whatever means I'm going to do, and then this, this, this company is going to ship it to me, that's haram, that's riba. Okay, that's riba because it has to be, I could choose the gold. For example, choose the gold. Once the gold comes in, then I have to swap it either with cash money or with the machine at the same time. But for me to buy it online and then for it to come, not allowed. That will lead to, later on, to a fight. Because the, the gold, while it comes, it could go up, it could go down. That's why it is. Even if I, for example, went to the shop to buy some gold. And I made a deal with him and they said, okay, I'm going to buy this. He said to me, okay, uh, 500 pounds. So, okay. so I took the gold and put it in my pocket and I said, oh, okay, I'm going to go and get the money from the car. It's not allowed. I have to put the gold. And wait, go and get the money from the car, swap the money with the gold straight away. It cannot be you go to the car, even if it takes you, it's just parking on opposite the shop. It has to be like this. You don't know what's going to happen during that time. Either the gold goes up or goes down, and one of them is going to be a benefit. That's why beneficiary or a loser. And that's why Islam pro prohibited all of this called gharar, gharar, something which is yaki, and there's an unknown, there is a, a big risk in this situation. So this is an introduction for what is coming now in a minute, inshallah. So to understand what is riba and see our riba fadl, let's go to the items where the riba goes into. Now, fadl. The types of wealth in which riba occurs. Riba only occurs with respect to the six categories of wealth that are explicitly stated in the following hadith. Ubada ibn al-Samit narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Gold exchange for gold, silver for silver, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, date for date, and salt for salt must be for the same amounts, equivalent and hand to hand. If these commodities vary, then sell them in any way you wish as long as it is hand to hand. Okay, go ahead. If items of the same genus are being exchanged are being exchanged, such as gold for gold. What a genus, what a genus here? The same type. Same type, okay. Are being exchanged, such as gold for gold or dates for dates. It is forbidden to increase any one of them or, or to pay them over time. The, uh, they must be equivalent in weight or amount, regardless of any differences in quality, good or bad. Furthermore, one must take possession of it in the same setting. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not sell gold for gold unless equivalent in weight and do not sell a lesser amount for a greater, for a greater amount or vice versa. Do not sell silver for silver unless equivalent in weight and do not sell a lesser amount for a greater amount or vice versa. And do not sell gold or silver that is not present at the moment for exchange of gold or silver that is present. Go ahead. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu <coughs> alayhi wa sallam stated, The selling of gold for gold is riba unless it is done hand to hand. The selling of wheat for wheat is riba unless it is done hand to hand. 
the selling of barley for barley is riba unless it is done hand to hand. The selling of dates for dates is riba unless it is done hand to hand. Go ahead. Abu Sa'id said, we were provided with dates during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the dates were of different qualities together. We used to sell two sa' of, for one sa' of a different quality. When that reached the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not exchange two sa' of dates for one sa' of dates or two sa' of wheat for one sa' of wheat or two gold coins for one gold coin. It's if not one, gold, silver, silver coin, dirham, because the hadith is silver. Doesn't matter, it's gold or silver, but this hadith says silver, dirham be dirham. Now, <coughs> now, if one wants to exchange one commodity for another of a different type, such as gold for silver or barley for wheat, this is permissible as long as the exchange takes place at once. This principle is based on the hadith of Ubadah quoted earlier. If these commodities vary, then sell them in any way you wish as long as it, as long as it is hand to hand. It is also based on the hadith of Ubadah recorded by Abu Dawood and others. And there is no harm in trading hand to hand gold for silver and the silver is more. However, over time is not allowed. And there is no harm in trading hand to hand barley for wheat and the wheat is more. However, over time it is not allowed. Thus, if one trades any of these six commodities for another of the six commodities, which has a different purpose to it, such as gold for barley or silver for salt, then it is allowed for the quantities. I can't hear you. You're muted. Can you just please, uh, just the last sentence, the statement after the hadith, last statement. <laughs> Thus, if one trades any of these six commodities for another of the six commodities, which has a different purpose to it. Okay, this is not correct. If he sell the six, if he sell the six commodity with another six of commodities? No. That's not correct. Read it again. Let me just correct it. Thus, yes. Yes. if one trades any of these six commodities for another of the six commodities, which has a different purpose to it. Okay, so... Uh, uh, so it is within the six commodities, like, for example, using the gold or the silver to buy wheat or barley or to buy date or salt. Remember, the six items that the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned is, that is, gold, silver, and he mentioned the wheat and the barley, and he mentioned the date, and he mentioned the salt. These are the six commodities. So we said now, regarding the gold and the silver, so if you have gold with gold, it has to be the same amount and that being sold at the same time. And if it's silver to silver, the same thing. But if it is now gold to silver, we said we could really make the quantity more. So two grams of gold for five grams of silver, no problem, as long as it is at the same time. Same thing with barley to the wheat and the wheat to the salt and so on and so forth. But now I'm going to use gold or silver to buy from the quantity from the food. Here we have different, it says different in, in, in why it is riba. Al-illa, it's white riba. So we have gold or silver. I want to buy, for example, five grams of gold or one grams of 24 grams of gold. I want to buy 10 kilos of date. No problem in everything. No problem in the quantity to differ, one gram to 10 kilos. And no problem that the payment to be deferred. That means to be delayed. So I would say, which is the, called the loan. You know, when that's when I buy, for example, with my currency. My currency is like gold. I'm buying five, for example, uh, 10 kilos of dates. I said to him, okay, 10 kilos of dates, please give me, brother. So he'll give me the 10 kilos of dates. And he will record on me, for example, five pounds. That's no problem. So there's the difference into the weight, the, the number, five to 10. And also it, is, has to, uh, it has been referred to later on. Now, some of the scholars... They said, no, that you could do that as long as you did not register onto you five pounds. You register onto you what you have taken. Like, for example, that if it is, that is, uh, I'm buying, let's say, 10 kilos of dates with five pounds that I've gotten money. So if I don't have the money to pay him now, okay, it's no problem, but he will register on you 10 kilos of dates. He will not register five pounds. The reason behind this or five grams of gold, or one gram of gold, okay, or, one, or five grams of silver. 
The reason behind this, because the gold and the silver and the money, the currency, it differs. So he registered onto you 10 kilos, because they stand kilos. They don't know how much is going to be worth this money of yours. So that's what some of those countries will register on you the 10 kilos, not the five pounds, because this five pounds goes up and down. That's what he means. Uh, or, or the five kilos of gram dates goes up and down because it was worth nothing later on. Uh, 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 now, that's some of the scholars had said he will register onto you five kilos. No problem to defer the payment, but he will register onto you the kilos that you have purchased. And then when you come, then we will uh, give you the money which is equivalent for, the, for this debt, which is equivalent of that kilos that which has been sold at the beginning. Not with the kilos which has been in the Sami, because you don't want to uh, have an extra money for something which you haven't got. I'll give you, an, I'll give you more clearing here regarding this issue. When I take in the 10 kilos of dates, and he registered on me, okay, five pounds, okay, and I went home. Then I went back and I said, okay, brother. I cannot give you the five pounds. I'm going to give you 20 kilos of, uh, instead of the 10 kilos of date, 20 kilos of wheat. Okay. Is that halal or haram? It is halal on, on, on one way. That is that the 20 kilos of wheat is equivalent to the five pounds you were originally going to be paying. But if it's going to be extra, that's riba. Because you are actually this person who is the creditor who gave him the, the, the dates in the first place. He's trying to make money out of nothing which is not in his hand. The kilos of the dates are ready with this man. So how can he make extra money with something which is not in his hand? So this guy who was the original uh, uh, seller, he cannot make money and extra on something which he cannot guarantee because it's not his hand. The kilos of the dates are already with that guy. So he could accept the wheat which is, but as long as it is equivalent to the original debt. And that will lead us later on to as well, buying a debt with a debt, lots of debt agencies, they will buy your debt as a halal haram. So they take, for example, you have a debt onto, a, they go to a company, how much this guy owes you? I have 20, uh, 10,000 pounds. Okay. Do you want to uh, sell your debt? So they sell it. Okay. Because they, they've already given up on this guy, so 5,000 pounds. And this agency will start gone uh, uh, after that guy just to get whatever they can as long as they get more than the five thousand pound they'll make a profit and that's gambling apart from being riba because they might get nothing they might get extra that's called riba and gambling as well all right let's go back to uh, the hadith and well add so we see here read me the last statement before aisha the last statement which we wanted to correct it please read it again thus if one trades any of these six commodities for another of the six commodities which has a different purpose to it such as gold for barley or silver for salt then it is allowed for the quantities to differ as well as for the payment to be made over time okay so to be the, the quantity to differ and the payment to be on a different time later on now aisha the law she said Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bought foodstuff from a Jew on credit and he gave him his shield as collateral. Okay, so he bought from him 30 sa. This is the head of the state, remember. The Prophet sallallahu is at the end of the time of his life. Head of the state, Prophet of Allah, he don't have any even wheat in his house. Barley, barley, not wheat. So he borrowed, sorry, he not borrowed, he had bought, purchased from this Jewish man uh, 30 sa'a. Sa'a is a, about four handful, which is about two and a half kilos of barley. So he's talking about 60 kilos of barley. And they didn't have money to give him. So that's the furring of the time. Uh, that, that's it shows, it shows the permissibility to pay, uh, to refer the payment for later on. And he had given the Prophet as a sh his shield to this Jewish man for the sake of anything had happened then you could take the shield and sell it and get the price of that, the cost of that, uh, that barley that he purchased from him. And I remember yeah, the Prophet of Allah is giving his shield to be pwned by this Jewish man. SubhanAllah. This Jewish man that even he doesn't trust the Prophet Sallallahu and he's going to take his shield to be pwned 
And he a prophet of Allah is the head of the state, and he could just say to the Jewish, I'm going to take your barley whether you like it or not, because he's head of the state. The Jewish person has got no, no sayings there. But look at this justice. Head of the state, borrowing barley from a Jewish man. The Jewish man is not saying, okay, give me something. And the prophet of the universe said to him, I'm a prophet, the head of the state, and you have no right to ask me for that. He pawned his uh, shield, and he died, the prophet of Allah, before he had paid the money back, but he's got the shield, the Jewish man. Subhanallah. Tayyip. Al-Amir al-San'ani fi Subul al-Salam. This is the greatest book in explaining uh, uh, the uh, book of Ghaih, Bulug al-Maram. Bulug al-Maram has got explanation. I was thinking about to start Bulug al-Maram very soon, but uh, I'm going to be starting, inshallah, Sharh Yad al-Salihin in the beginning of this month, November, in Luton, bi So, uh, the uh, don't mention this book yet. We haven't really discussed it, but I'm, this is what I'm going to be planning, inshallah. But Subur uh, Salam, Sheikh Al Albani, he said that this is the best of explanation uh, of the Bilug Al Maram. Amir Al Sanani, what does he say? Tfadal? Al Amir Al Sanani wrote in Subul Al Salam, volume three, page 38. You should realize that the scholars agree that it is allowed to sell one riba commodity for another riba commodity that does not share the same quality over time and with an increase in the amount, such as buying wheat with gold or barley with silver and others of the weighed items. Now, before we go ahead, because the, the author did not discuss it, okay, uh, uh, basically, he did not discuss the issue of is it just these six items only, or we have different as well? It, it runs into other. Okay, Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, and with him as well, Ali ibn Aqil, one of the great scholars of the Hanabil, Imam Ahmad. Uh, ibn Hazm is the one who is we call they call him uh, superficial or outward, or I, we call him the the one who does not believe in qiyas rule of deduction Rahimallah. they have stuck to the six commodities that these are the ones who serve riba other than, other than that there is no riba but the jumhur the majority of the scholars and Sheikh islam Timi, along with them as well they said this is wrong if it runs because it's not just these six as long as we look at the cause the reason why they are prohibited then we could really because in, in, in sharia we have qiyas analogy Okay, so when we said, for example, the Prophet he forbade haram, which is the intoxicant drink. He didn't talk about drugs, but looking at the qiyas, drugs is haram. Okay, looking at the qiyas, we have whatever is harmful is haram. So the correct opinion, and this is the opinion of our Sheikh al Albani, rahimahullah, and our opinion of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen and others, the Shiyukh, the scholars, the major scholars, that the commodities, as long as they have the same. So the gold and the silver, only the gold and the silver. Because the gold and silver, they used to be to be money. So anything to do with the gold and silver, like the currency, the paper. And Sheikh Al-Bani said the paper has got no value. It's the value that would the government decide. Okay, So it is the gold and silver and the paper, which is the currency. Those are the ones that riba goes into them. So it has to be currency with the currency, same amount at the same time being paid. If they differ, yes, more, they could differ into the quantity but they cannot differ in terms of payment. It has to be at the same time. So they said, so no problem, white gold with white gold. It doesn't matter. Or rubies with rubies, or pearls with pearls. Okay, it doesn't matter. These are, they don't have their event. Or metal, or copper. So no problem to have copper with copper. So I want copper, grade A, five kilos of croda, with 20,000 uh, 20, kilos of another copper, which is grade C or grade D. So we tell the people who are scrap, scrap metal, don't worry about what you're doing. So you could really, you know, you could exchange two loads of uh, scrap metal to another five loads of scrap metals. It doesn't matter. And the payment can be deferred as well to be, uh, as well, uh, to be delayed. No problem. So that's, so anything apart from the gold and silver. As for the food, that's differs now, which is the barley, and the wheat, and the date, and salt. These are the four mentioned. They're not, we're not going to stick with them because correct opinion is that what, what is the reason that, are, that, the, that the reason that haram in them? 
uh, after looking at the difference that the scholars had basically had agreed that there is a reason but the different what is the reason the difference that the, all the scholars we have consensus and there's a reason for that being haram so there, there's a reason why they have common in between them but they don't they differ which one is the common why the prophet made it prohibited they differed malikiyah from the shafi'iyah from the hanbaliyah from the hanafiyah the correct is uh sheikh uh, sheikh Sam and also which is the opinion of our sheikh al-albani and the sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah uh, wa yani ja'alahu min ahli al-jannah they said that the reason behind this is that the waiting weighing and there are food so anything to be weighed or to be food they're together weighing and food then uh, the riba goes into them so let's just talk about something where the riba goes into and something which does not go to the riba into. So if we talk about the rice, now we have no class A, class of rice of basmati rice, and we have long grain rice. And so if we go by Ibn Hazm and Ali ibn Aqil, no problem with the rice. The rice is outside the six, which is mentioned. According to the other scholar, they said, hang on a second. Does the rice goes into it as a food? Yes, it is food. Is it being measured by weight and and volume? Yes, it is. So the rice basmati, I cannot swap five kilos of or one sack of basmati rice, ten kilos, to two sacks of long grain rice. If I want to make it halal, I'll sell that one sack, which is ten kilos of basmati rice, into money, bring the money, and I buy whatever I like with that. No problem. Don't do sacks of long grain or any other rice, because but there are things which are okay not to be so they are not to be the, the, the case okay uh, so the rice yes so this is called the food but not the okay apple apples no because apples is not uh, something that you measure with the weight you measure it as well with the what with the, with the with the ones one apple two apples one watermelon two watermelons okay because it can be counted then it cannot, no problem to, it's outside those uh, six items and it is not, does not, it does not run it, run in it the riba. So no problem to have, I want to, for example, a bag of apple class A, let's say it is, what do you call it? Gal, ga, some of the types are called gallery or something like this. Uh, well, five kilos of that. I want to swap it to 10 kilos of Banbury apple, which is better, or le, uh, less quality or pink apple. One kilo, of, no problem of that because it's not included into that. If you understand this, alhamdulillah, then you will be having no problem whatsoever. The grapes, the grapes runs into it because the grapes is food that is to be measured by the quad, it's food and it's to be measured by wait, you can't, you don't sell the grapes by one. Nobody will say one grape, two grapes, but one apple, yes, you can. There are some people who sell it with one kilo, with one apple. So because of that, the, 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 the grapes runs into it, the riba. Fine. <clears throat> Let's go to, please finish what you say. It is not permissible to sell fresh dates for dry dates, except for al araya which refers to the poor who do not have date palms. Do you they have... Are- do you have any footnotes regarding the araya? In the next page. Okay, is. okay, next page. Well, go ahead. They are allowed to sell the fresh dates on the trees in exchange for its estimated amount of dry dates. Abdullah ibn Umar narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade al-muzabana which is where fresh dates in the trees are sold against dry dates. He also forbade selling grapes against raisins for an estimated weight. Okay. Right. So he said, yeah, the Prophet of Allah, he naha anil muzabana. What is the muzabana? That is to sell the fresh dates with the dry dates. You know that the fresh dates, they are more weight into that than the dry dates. Is always because the moist is gone from then they will be uh, the dry days will be lighter and the, and the fresh days the, 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 the juice into them they will be heavier طيب. 
and, this, and then he said as well, he forbade as well the karm, karm which is the fresh dates, uh, grapes with the raisins. Okay. Now he called here the, 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 the fresh grapes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said al-karm. And that was before the prohibition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to call the grapes into karm. He said, la tusammu al-inaba karma. Do not call the inab, the grapes to be karm. For really the heart of the believer is the karm. Uh, the karm, okay, uh, Sheikh Al Albani, he said in Sisila Sahiha of his uh, 2801 that it is dislike to call the grapes into the word karm for two reasons. Reason number one, the Prophet Allah said in the hadith that the karm means the noble, and the noble things that the Prophet uh, 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 that is the the believer's heart, that's the noble, not the get race. Second one is that that word reminded those people at the time, the kuffar, of something lingering to alcohol, to make it, sorry, wine. So this karm reminds them and arouses inside them the drinking of the wine. So that's why it is disliked to call the grapes into karm because the karm is the is the extracted juice, which is the wine juice out of this grape. That's because of these reasons. That is disliked to call, uh, it's not haram, but disliked to call the grapes is into karm. We call it inab. Inab, not karm. But I was on a kid, used to go in karm, karmitna, mashallah. Anibatna means our inab, karm. Now I know it is not uh, good to, to call it the karm. Right. Prophet Sallam, he said, he forbade from doing this to sell the grapes, five kilos of grapes to five kilos of raisins. Why? Because the raisins are much, much lighter. And you know the raisins are very more expensive. So you can't swap them like this because it will be riba. But you could sell the grapes or sell the raisin and buy the other product. Zayd ibn Thabit, fadl. Zayd ibn Thabit, radiallahu anhu, also stated that the Master of Allah gave an exemption for the araya to buy dates according to an estimate of their weight. Al-Araya is where someone gives another the fruit of a date palm tree, but not its ownership. The date palm owning Arabs used to donate trees to the poor, but only the product and not the tree itself. In the same way that sheep or camels or, or that sheep or camel owners would donate the milk, but not the animal itself. There is some difference of opinion concerning its meaning in Islamic law. Malik said, Al-Araya is where a man lends another date palm tree. However, he is then harmed by the other entering into his garden. So he buys its estimated product for an amount of dried, for an, for an amount of dried dates. Yazid narrated from Sufyan ibn Hussein, that Al-Araya refers to the date palm trees that were donated to the poor, but they would not be able to wait for the product to ripen. Hence, they were allowed to sell the estimated product of those trees for dates. See Fath uh, al-Bari, volume 4, page 390. So what is Al-Araya? Simple. Al-Araya is palm trees. They are lent or given as a gift to the poor people in order for them to use their dates and eat from them. So this is called Al-Araya. Al-Araya is palm trees who are lent or being given as a gift, hiba, to the poor people in order to consume the dates on top of them. Because Ahl Al-Araya, they are poor, poor people. Sometimes they want you know food, but this dates, which is on the top, Okay, uh, it's not really ready. So what do they do? He cannot wait for the for the dates to be uh, to be uh, uh, ripened, and he wants food. Prophet Sallam had given the permission to sell that date which is on top of the tree. Okay, which is unready, uh, unready palm, unready uh, dates for something from the ready dates to eat because they want to eat so they will this guy who wants to let's say give them dates he will come and he will look and they will make an estimate prediction how many kilos that is on the top of the tree will make because you can't bring it down you can't weigh it because if he takes it out it will be finished 
say, to wait until they'll be ripened. So we would say, this will make 100 kilos. So we'll give them 100 kilos of dates, which is ready. This is only being given the concession to the people who are poor because they want food. Otherwise, it's not allowed. Continue, please. The Prophet wasallam forbade the sale of fresh fruits for dried fruits because the fruits lose weight when they dry. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas narrated that the Prophet I don't, I, don't like, I don't like the fruits here. The dates, please. No, it's not fruits. So fresh dates with dry dates. It's not the fruits. Now, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas narrated that the Prophet wasallam was asked about selling fresh dates in exchange for dried. And he said, does the quantity of the fresh decrease when it is dried? The people answered yes. So he prohibited them from that action. It is not allowed to exchange a riba commodity with its own genus, two of them together, or with one of the other categories. Go ahead. Uh, Fadala, Fadala ibn Ubaid said, Fadala, 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 Fadala ibn Ubaid said, I bought a necklace on the day of Khaybar for 12 dinars. It was made of gold and pearls. I separated the gold from the gems and found it were, and found it to be more than 12 dinars. I mentioned it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said it should not be sold until its jo- until its gold and gems have been separated. This is very important for the sisters and the women who sell golds. You go to the jewelry and you have sometimes that's in Pakistan and Jordan maybe in this country they don't have that. Let's say they have old gold and it's like worth 10, 10, 10 grams of, let's say, 22 carats of gold. So 10 grams of 22 carats, but it's old. So she, she will go and give it to the, to the jeweler, and he will give her 9 grams of 22 carats of gold, but it's new. So that she loses, or he will, she, she will, he will give her equivalent to that in new, which is new manufactured, 10 grams of 22 carats, exactly the same, but she'll go and get some and pay extra money. That's riba. Has to be gold with gold, as we said. Well, then, I mean, nobody juror would take the old and give her the new one. Okay, make it halal. She would sell this for money. She'll take money, even if the juror himself. Sell it money, and she could buy whatever she liked from the old thing. Now, he's saying as well that that gold, sometimes it has with it other items. If it had with it other items, we're not allowed to sell these gold with the other items unless we separate the gold from the other items. Like a ring has got, I don't know, bead or whatever it is. I cannot, I cannot sell it like this. I have to separate to know how much is the weight of the gold. I cannot just sell it like this. Uh, and that is, as I said, lots of people enter into it. Haven't you seen people buying golds with checks? I have. It's haram. Because checks is di- different from the credit card. as a debit card. Debit card straight away. So if I'm going to buy gold or silver, okay, it has to be hand-to-hand. And you'll find, for example, that this person paying with a check, and the check takes about two, three days to clear. It's haram. So these things that we have seen in the market like women buying the old gold, for, and they will say the manufacturing price. You see, that is haram. Unless you go to a jeweler and you say, for example, I want to manufacture a necklace. How much is the gold that I need? You need to buy 10 grams. Talk to 10 grams. And I want to, so he takes the price of the 10 grams and plus his manufacturing labor. No problem. Let's later on, she got it and she wants to sell it back. Okay, she sells it back. Okay, how much is it? 10, 10 grams, still 10 grams. And then he gives it the price of 10 grams, but he deducts his labor. That's haram. Because that's what's worth the gold. Why, why do you want to deduct the labor? The labor you took it for me when you manufactured it now. So this gold, I, the, what I paid for the gold, this gold maybe I came on a different day. The gold maybe gone up, gone down, but you cannot deduct from me the manufacturing, whether it's him, the same one who did it, or somebody else with the factory, that's what the people they do these days. Five. Uh, let me just see if anything that I need to make sure that I've left. Okay. 
So I think, inshallah, up to now, we have covered everything to do with the riba. If you have any questions regarding what we've heard to do with the transactions, please go ahead and leave it for the co-host. Or it goes to the brothers who are in Aylesbury. Now. Jazakumullah khairan shaykhana. Brothers and sisters who have a question, you can raise your hand on the bottom right hand corner. Priority is for Ellsbury, as Sheikh has just said. And if sisters they prefer to type, no problem, send it to questions admin one on the chat, which is enabled. Okay, Hamza, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, I was going to ask a question. You know about uh, hadiths and stuff. Uh, what books would you recommend? To learn about the hadiths, which, which hadiths? Sorry, just all, just all hadiths, just any, just any, like the Prophet ﷺ, just all of them. Yeah, it depends upon the level of the person that he is capable of reading. But uh, somebody like yourself, maybe you want to invest in getting Riyadh Salihin, Riyadh Salihin. Get that book. It's yeah, two volumes. Yeah, that two volumes, enough for you, inshallah, because God lost a plenty of hadith, which will teach you lots of things, whether it's aqidah or manners now. A sister is asking about a Quran recitation, which is like a song. Is that allowed? Is there anything in the sunnah about this? Quran, like a song? I didn't understand. That. The reciter, he recites like it's a song. It's like music or something. Is that allowed, she's asking? She buys it, well, she, she she listens to it. Oh, I didn't understand that first part of the question. Okay, the sister is saying that there's a recitation that they've heard and it sounds like it's a song or it's like a music and they're asking what is the ruling on that? See, I cannot give a general uh, any fatwa regarding this. So what do you call, for example, the recitation of Sheikh Mishar Al-Fasi? Is that sounds like a music or... When he changes melody from one melody to another, is that sounds like music? But if it is the case, you don't know, it's, it's halal, this is the way. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Qur'an, he commanded us to ghanna bi, to ghanna, makes like, make it like sound like a song. Uh, because, and the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the person whom you, the best of recite of yours is the one who he recites and you think there is khushua. So some of the reciters, when they, they, I listen to them, like from the haram, without mentioning names. One of the recitals of Haram, he used to pray in Salat al-Isha. I don't like digest his recitation because, and he's an old man, and his, his, his sound is not really good. It's like in Prophet Sallallahu when he had the Adhan being seen by Abdullah ibn Zayd and also Amr al-Khattab and the Prophet Sallallahu he said, even to the one who's seen the vision to go and give it to the best of callers of the Adhan, and that is Bilal, his voice is nice. Even Bilal, he was a, a freed slave. But because he got his nice bass voice, now nice sound, and he was from Abyssinia, he's given him the priority, even though he did not see the dream of the, the vision of the, the, the Adhan. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if this happened, then they said, no, messenger of Allah, don't give it to Bilal. I got priority because I've seen it in my vision. SubhanAllah. And that's why you find people now, he's stuck to make the Adhan. Yeah. He, when his voice, when he makes the Adhan, you want to put your hands into your ears. He's just blasting your ears. He's making you hate the Adhan, not to love the Adhan. The Adhan that you want to... So the, 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 the one whom you, are, you like the recitation is the one who takes it with the melody. But if, if you're asking about different cases here, which is for those people who are going with the Quran according to the Sulam al-Musiqi, which is in Arabic, that is Dara, Fa, like So they, they learn the way that the music is, and then they start learning the Quran, which we call it Al-Qara'atu Bil-Alhan. That's a bid'ah. That is a bid'ah. So give me maqam hijazi. Give me maqam in a special, you know, like this is haram. But this is the one which is natural. It comes on. The one which is natural, like for example, a person who's a recite, definitely at the beginning, he's going to be following a particular sound. If you love something, somebody, okay, you start imitating him without you knowing. And Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, he said, no problem to imitate a recite. You have to do that when you are starting. No problem. Okay, but when you go over burden, you know, you're starting to master the way that he's doing exactly and you can't go away from his, that's, we don't want it. But natural, each person, well, after recitation, he would imitate a person. Later on, he will have his own touch. So it will be shari al-fasi plus or minus or whatever recita reciter that you like from the haram. 
so I'm, I don't know if I've answered the sister's question, but al qiraatu bil alhan, as Imam Ahmad said, it's a bid'ah. Okay, but the melody which we're talking about, that is the beautiful melody, is required when you recite the Quran. Now. Sheikh, she sent um, a recitation through, but uh, I think maybe if they asked in private or something. Can you play it? Yes, Sheikh. I'll, I'll play it, inshallah. Up to here, that's no problem, inshallah. Sheikh Faisal, please ask your question. Sheikh, um, you know, of course, when we there is inflation, right? So when someone, when these people are lending money, they're saying, "Well, it's it's the the the, vo the value of the money goes down. That's why I'm charging this money, which is interest." So, for example. If somebody lends me a dollar and I have to pay that back, pay that person back in two years, they will say that that dollar is no longer worth a dollar. It's maybe worth 90 cents. So they may charge me a dollar and 10 cents. And they're saying that 10 cents is not riba, it's just the value that I have lost in those two years. Isn't that riba? Absolutely. It's 100% riba. This is where the riba, the people that are making excuses for that. But that there will be understandable case when that you lent him $1,000 and the somehow the country went in war, okay? And this currency of his collapsed. So this $1,000 that you have borrowed is worth now, okay, $50. That's understandable. So we will give him equivalent, not to do a, 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 a rate, which is from the beginning, I'm going to get, charge you extra. That's riba. But at the, when I wanted to give the date, the, 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 the debt back, Prophet Salaam, said, ah, you know, be beautiful. So you can give the debt plus extra money, even if it's the same money, but not something which is pre-planned or, or pre-conditioned. So if this money, like this happens a lot. In, in people, for example, borrowed, let's say, I, I, myself, it took place with me. I lent a person in this country Okay, 400 pounds. And that, back, that is back into the year 1982 or 83. And when I came here, I lent him. This is, I learned the hard way how to trust people. I lent him 400 pounds. An Iraqi person, Iraqi person. And he's supposed to give it to me within two months or one month. So it took about six, seven years. And in that time, what happened? Well, five, six years. Iraq entered war, okay? Which is the first, the first Gulf War, and then the second Gulf War. First one, which is in, in the 80s, beginning, and then 1919, which is a disaster. So, in the, when the first war took place, the currency of the Iraqi is gone rubbish before one dinar, Iraqi dinar, is equivalent to about three pounds. When the war took place, the dinar will not even bring the pound. So I kept asking for my money, 400 pounds, which is pounds in par currency. And what he did, because he didn't want to pay, I had my relative uncle actually who is studying in iraq and the father of this person who had I lent him the money he is one of the doctors and professors okay which is in the university where my uncle study so he kept embarrassing his uncle the money of my nephew i wanted so instead of giving me which is equivalent to the 400 he's given me that 
equivalence of that in Iraqi, but in the Iraqi when it was powerful. So he gave him, I remember, 190 Iraqi, which is in the powerful time, it's equivalent to what? 400 pounds. But he gave it to him when the currency is down. So in the 190 equivalent in Iraq to 400 pounds. But you take it outside Iraq, nobody wants to buy it. So I got for the 190 dinars of Iraqi, maybe 160, 150 pounds. And I lost 250 pounds. I'm not going to forgive him for that because he doesn't deserve forgiveness. But that's what I'm saying to you, that I understand that if it's collapsed, the, the currency, you should cover it up with a currency which is more stable. Like the most stable currency now is the dollar. Okay? So if you learn. But if I lend you, for example, in pounds and pounds, it depends how long, for example, let's say, for example, 20 years, I gave you to give you the back the money after. I mean, I will give you not the inflation. I will, I will not precondition that from the beginning to give me such and such. But if I give it a long, after a long time, I will give money extra to that guy for the sake of thanking him. Not a pre-planned riba, wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Naam. Harun. Harun, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I don't understand why buying gold with a check is not permissible. Buying gold with a check. The check, it does not clear on the same moment. It's not like the card, which is in the machine straight away the money is gone. So because it's deferring the payment, it's haram. It has to be the gold straight away the money. So pay the money, you get the gold. Get, pay the money, you get the gold. So here I'm getting the gold, but the money is not being paid. I'm paying the check and the check... Is a promise. We said even online you can't buy it because here there's uh, money's gone straight and the money, the gold has to be arrived yet. We said we could choose the gold until the gold arrives, then the money will exchange and the gold will be taken. It has to be hand to hand. Allah's Messenger he said, Tit for tat. Ha and biha. Ha, ha. Take, give. Now. Barakallahu Sheikh. A sister, a different sister is asking, is it allowed to read the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, like a, a Quran recitation with a melody? Scholars have differed. We find that this is the Sloven Najdi. The, the scholars from Ahl Najd, they do that. So you find, for example, person reciting for Sheikh, especially the Sheikh uh, Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, they will recite it in a way which is the melody. Our Sheikh Al-Albani says it's a bid'ah. It's not correct because it wasn't being done at the time of the Prophet or the companions. Some argue it is it is okay, and there's their, their reasons for this, like Sheikh Al-Saymi, and I've heard what he just said. And uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, the son of Sheikh Abdul Masjid Abad, he's got, for example, Al Adab al Mufrad explained, and this was the reciter for him. Sometimes he does the hadith, most of the time, it's normal way. But sometimes I've heard him saying it with a melody, just about sometimes some hadith. So the Sheikh Abdul Zak is like saying to him that we want to have a diversity here. Uh, I myself, I say there is no whatsoever trace at the, at the time to mix up, you know, to read it in a melody. By the way, to read it in a melody, not to apply the ahkam al tajweed. That's a bid'ah with the consensus of all of them. So, because of Naha Rasulullah, I can't make gunnas and khfa and all of that. That's not correct. But the way that is a melody, no, yani that's the difference. Nah. Jazakumullah khayran, Sheikh. Muhammad Ali, please go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. Salam to Rakhitu. Sheikh, now people buy gold and they save it as a deposit, like and they want to use it uh, in hard times. So I think I heard somewhere, but I don't recall now. Um, it's not allowed to save gold like that. You're not allowed to invest into gold, meaning that I cannot buy gold to sell it later on. Yeah, it's not correct. Yes, haram. No. Yes, that's correct. How, how is that, Sheikh? Sorry? How is that? Like, uh, what, what, because, because, uh, it's, because it's gambling. This is like ah, gambling. No. It is gambling plus it's riba. It's gambling because you know you're hoping to go for the gold up and to go down. Okay, so that's haram. Our Sheikh Al-Bani said it's prohibited and haram. You've asked me about something which I have to because you are from Canada and it's about the Sheikh uh, Al-Athiubi, Rahimahullah, regarding the word of the names of Allah. 
Sitir. Didn't you ask me about that? No, I'm certain. Yes, okay. Uh, I've looked at it, basically. And the two, with respect to our Sheikh Rahmatullah Ali, the two are correct. As-Sitir and As-Satir. Abdul satir or Abdul sitir And when he says that most of the scholars, the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla was on, on the on the weight of Fa'il, Al-Majid, Al-Hakim. But in the same hadith, there is Hayyun, which is not Fa'il. So Hayyun on the weight of Sitir, same. So um, it looks like both are to be correct, no problem. Sitir. Abu Sheikh ibn Uthameen was, he's not really decisive about it. He was all the time saying a satir until one of the students of knowledge was reciting the hadith and he put a satir. And he said the Sheikh Ibn Uthameen that, that when he recited it, like this way, and he read it like this, I had to go investigate. And he said to the students of knowledge, go and look for me, what do you think? Uh, uh, and he did not really say anything about after that. But I know that Sheikh Shit, uh, Shitri and all of that, they say a satir. But some of the scholars say it's not a name, it's a, a sifa. An attribute like Sheikh Al Shitri, but the correct opinion it is one of the names of Allah, as Satir or as Satir. Now, Father. Sheikh Ahmed, there's a brother <laughs> asking if he can ask a question on the chat because he's shy, and Abu Bilal wants a question as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Abu Bilal, there's nobody, but, but the one who wants to ask a question was shy, what, what on writing? Yeah, he wants to write it to you and let me ask you. Yeah, no, no problem. You see, okay. when we said, Sheikh Ahmed, you don't be Ibn Hazm, superficial. That was at the time of the Ask a Scholar. Ask a Scholar, we had how many questions we had? Lots of questions. True, Sheikh. How do we have any questions? So we can't say to you, no, are you male or a female? Jazakumullah khan, Sheikh. Ask a Scholar, we had how many questions you had? So many. That's why we want the sisters and ask a scholar. Now, ask a, a, a person like myself. No problem, Akhi. You have no question of that. If somebody's shy, but we always say to the people who are shy to ask, always speak about the third party. Don't ask about yourself. Fadal with that question. Which the question is, is that if a person says, I passed my test because I studied, would that be a minor shirk? That's the question. So if a person said, I passed my test because I have studied. Okay, I have, I have flew from Jordan to the UK in half an hour because I boarded the plane. Is that shirk? I'm asking you, Ahmed. No, oh, shirk. <laughs> so I flew from Jordan to UK or from Saudi Arabia to the UK in half an hour because I boarded the plane. Or I took a rocket. It's not shirk, ikhwani. Nah. Fadal, yeah, uh, the the Zohra. No, no, Zohra is Muhammad Muslim. I don't know which one. Zohra, Fadal. Yeah, yeah, so Zohra, inshallah. Zohra, and uh, I'll leave the co host the last one. No problem. Assalamu alaikum. So during that first lockdown, lots of traders, they really, really hyped up the prices of toilet roll and hand sanitizer. Mm. Is that loud? Haram. That is haram, that is exploiting the situation where the people are in need. Tissue, which cost about two, three pounds, this shop, which has been exposed by an English guy, I remember. And it's, I think, it's like a Hindu shop, I remember it was, uh, in London. And you're selling it for 12 pounds. Just some rubbish tissue rolls, which cost about two, three pounds, selling it for 12 pounds. And this guy, he hammered them. Have you, have you seen that clip? I don't know. Yeah. So you see yes, not allowed to exploit things like this. Allahul Musta'an. People take advantage of these things. Even the Muslims. I went to the shops. I don't want to say the shop here. in Well-known supermarket. And uh, they put the price of the noodles. Because I buy noodles. Usually these, I give five for one pound. Or four for one pound. Five for one pound. Buy a box. At that time, three for one pound. And two for one pound, exploiting the situation. Yeah, and they, yeah. they give you they give you an excuse. Yeah, I bought it expensive. If you don't buy it, just leave it with that manufacturer. Don't buy it, and they will match it. They will put it down. Don't buy it. Nah. He was selling a small bottle of hand hand sanitizer for ten pound. Yeah, listen to me, sister. If this person, 
sees that the sanitizer is important. And the only way to get it is to get it expensive. And he's selling it as uh, no greed is no problem. But if he is making himself the price like that because of the need, that's haram. By the way, if I want to end the class, end the class here, Ahmed, and there's a question for the co-host, you just tell me there's a question for the co-host, I'll just give the co-host, okay? So there will be no closing of the class now. Fadal. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, just confused about one of the points you made. You said if, one... Zaman, if you if you want to get priority, yeah. you have to write your English name as follows: Muhammad Zaman and Aylesbury. Inshallah. So you will be on the top of the list. But like this, Muhammad Zaman, Muslim, and in Arabic, is even confusing to the brother Ahmed if you are from Aylesbury or not, because you are depending upon me. I don't look at the names. Sometimes yeah. I do, sometimes I don't. Fadal. Uh, you made a point regarding if one wants to exchange one commodity for another of a different type, such as gold for silver, the exchange has to take place at one time. Um, but you also mentioned if you trade uh, one of the six commodities for another, that the payment can be made over time. How is that possible? It doesn't make sense to me. It sounds contradictory to me. I didn't say outside the six commodity. I said from these commodities, commodity. there are two types. One which is the, the reason... Is like the gold and the silver, they are gold and silver, which is to do with currency. And the other one, which is the four mentioned, the date and the salt and the barley and the wheat are food. Yes. So if I'm going to buy from the gold or the silver into the food, no problem. The quantity to differ and the time to differ. Is that Mr. clear for you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Is that okay? Sorry, Masjid, Majid, Majid. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, this is just, um, uh, as you just explained about investing in gold, how is it if we invest in floors in real estate and obviously the price goes up and then we can sell it, like, like buying, buying and selling land, uh, houses, because that's also investing money. Uh, you, you, you're not clear because you're speaking from a cave. Uh, I don't know what we're asking about. Again. Well, let me just put on my headset. Yeah, I, I can't hear because you're speaking from a cave. Now we can't hear you, Bavar, I'm afraid. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes that's better. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm, just, I'm just asking the question uh, regarding investing in real estate. So we buy plots, we sell plots, we buy properties, obviously. The, we, we uh, keep uh, you, you know, uh, because my English is not that good, your real estate, what does that mean? Just, just buying and selling properties. So for land. Property, for land. Okay, selling so property. Yeah. No, no problem to sell and properties and land. So what is that? The question. The question is because someone asked the question in regards investing in pure gold with the intention when the price will go up. Yeah, that, that's not fair. Gold and silver, those are the ones that don't really go onto the property. So you somebody buying a car and he's waiting for it to get more expensive. No problem. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You remember the metal scrap? You remember the metal scrap we talked about? So metal scrap have to be happy. <laughs> no. no, that's fine. Thank you. I, one, I, I have too many questions. I need you to finish the class. I've got a headache. So I would, with all respect of you, no adding of the classes. The last person was Harith Muslim, and I have to go to the co-host. Please, I've got a headache. Wallahi. Fabal. Where have you gone, Harith? I've lost your name. <laughs> Where is he gone? You're like Harith. You're not easy to find. You're Arabic as well. Go ahead, Harith. Uh, sorry. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. My question was... Um, if you had uh, your gold, which you bought yourself and you stored this in the bank, and then the bank was robbed or the bank had the, the vault was stolen and they reimburse you through their own policies, can you accept that money? Because they are giving you money for the gold that you lost. If, or if someone had been holding it in their house for you and they lost the gold and then they say, I will give you the value of that gold. No, in money. You, you mean somebody, you trusted him with the gold? Yeah. To go and keep it with him and he's being robbed? Yeah. And okay. he wishes the to answer of this, you're going to see it, inshallah, in a chapter called al ariya borrow, or al istiman trusting somebody. So if I give you the answer now, you're not going to come to the class. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep you grilled until no. that class because we'll talk. It's only about just about next class or the class after. We'll talk about that, inshallah. Okay. okay. Which is al, al amana the trust, you trust it, you've been trusted. And you're going to find something very interesting. Is he liable to pay you back or not? Because there's a difference between 
somebody who's been paid to look after it and somebody who's doing it for a favor. Hmm. Okay? And different as well, where you told him where to hide it or where he had put it. You'll, you'll find lots of things that would amaze you. Okay, Inshallah. Uh, also, also, I love, I liked your Ibn Hazm <laughs> reference, Sheikh. It made yeah. me laugh a lot, actually. <laughs> ah, yes. Ibn Hazm, uh, from his uh, superficial, for example, Sheikh al used to say <laughs> that the Prophet ﷺ forbade us to urinate into the uh, the still water, the water like a pond, which is in like a water swimming pool or a pond or lake, which is not like a sea, okay? To urinate into in it. So Ibn Hazm, he says, no problem if you urinate in a pot and you put the pot of urination in the <laughs> pond. <laughs> He makes it haram only to directly urinate. <laughs> nah, exactly. That's uh, the funny thing about Ibn Hazm. Ya Abu Farid, Fadl. And we said the last question, Al Harith, but I can't really upset Abu. Zakalab Khair, Sheikh. Hi, Sheikh. Um, what was the ruling on buying and selling at auction? Halal. As long as it's halal items, halal. As long as you are not really doing it for the sake of putting your price up, halal. There's no cheating, halal. And also, you're not really betting on something which is ridiculous, like a paint. Uh, I remember Kiss 2, which was sold in the uh, Kiss 2, was sold in 1990, uh, two million pounds. And if you look at it, maybe an elephant drew it. Maybe an elephant just took a brush and with his trunk, and they sold it for two million. Allah al musta'an. Even for the paint expertise, they said it's not worth it even 2p, never mind 2 million. Now, that's no called weight of money. Fadal, ya. Zakallah, Kair Sheikh. So there's a, there's a shop in Reading Town Centre, and it's all over the UK. They buy and sell gadgets like phones and laptops and things. So if you sell them your phone, they will give you a cash price of, say, for example, 100 pounds. Right, and they'll give you the cash and you can walk away. Or they will give you 125 pounds voucher, which you can spend with them to buy another phone or another laptop or something. No problem. No problem. Exactly like that. I want to sell my phone if you want to take it as well. Subhanakallah, <laughs> 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 Allah, the Hamdik, Ashadullah, and the stuff is like a Allah, Allah, Allah